Hey guys, Steve Buckenroth back here to help you understand uh, a thing called adverse yaw. Adverse yaw affects an airplane when it banks. Now it only affects it during the banking process. So once you roll into the bank and stop banking, adverse yaw now goes away. So as we start that bank in this picture here, as we start that bank to the left, during the process of banking, we have adverse yaw. And what adverse yaw is, is this pilot here banked this airplane to the left. When he or she did that, they increased the lift. They increased the lift, obviously, on, on the right wing. And in doing so, that also increased the induced drag on the right wing. More lift, more induced drag, right? So we got more lift, more induced drag on the right wing. The left wing has, of course, less lift and less induced drag. So it's the induced drag that pulls that airplane and yaws it adversely in the opposite direction of the turn. And the slower we go, the more prominent adverse yaw is. The longer the wings, like on a glider, the more prominent adverse yaw is. So now, how do we correct for adverse yaw? Well, first and foremost, the way we do it is use our rudder. So when we use our rudder, that corrects for adverse yaw. But as airplanes have become more advanced and manufacturers have done a better job, they've built things like such things as differential ailerons, and they've built things like fris, freeze or frisk type ailerons. So let's look at differential ailerons. As we bank the plane to the left, the lower aileron, the high wing, that's this one right here, the high wing, that aileron does not go down as far as the low wing aileron goes up. This is done by the manufacturer to help with induced drag. So bank left, yaw right. So the right aileron, the top one, it doesn't go down nearly as far as the left one goes up. And the reason is we throw the left one up farther to counter the induced drag off of that high wing. And we counter that induced drag off the high wing with parasite drag. Now, that's one method. Another method is freeze type ailerons. So as an airplane is in straight and level flight, we can see that this, we could draw a straight line right here from the wing to the aileron. But the minute that the airplane banks, in this case, maybe it banked uh, the same way left, it wants to yaw right. So we take that lower aileron, lower wing, and cause it to deflect into the airstream. And where it deflects into the airstream, it increases drag on the lower wing, countering the drag of the induced drag from the high wing. So what we're doing again here is we're adding parasite drag to the low wing to counter induced drag on the high wing. All right, last of all, what we have is rudder aileron interconnect. With rudder aileron interconnect, when we bank an airplane, in this case, we're banking the airplane to the left, we see this aileron, this aileron, of course, going down, this aileron is going up, and the plane's banking to the left, and we as pilots need to put in left rudder. What happens here is the airplane is capable of automatically putting left rudder in for us. And we oftentimes still need more rudder, but it just gives it an initial input of that rudder, and then we can put more in as we need it. So that's the aileron interconnect, and that's done with, with interconnecting aileron uh, rudder via springs. So here we've got some sort of control set up that allows that to happen. It can also happen that way. Um, here's our control set up to make that happen. It can also happen by doing things that will put a tab out on the rudder as well and cause the rudder to move in the direction by inserting a tab that, that drives it over. So in summary, adverse yaw, bank left, adversely yaw right. Bank right, adversely yaw left. So the inside aileron the low wing inside aileron 
we're creating more drag through either differential aileron or freeze type aileron or automatically moving the rudder to make that happen.